I should be live now. Are we live? Hi everyone. Just let me know you're there. We're just waiting for everyone to come back on and then we're good to go again. Good to see everybody. Well, virtually. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Yeah. For logging all on back on, great. Amen. Thank you, everybody. God is good. Amen. Thanks, Linda. What well, got got Linda to tape herself and to play. So you, you didn't miss out on her beautiful voice. So I hope everyone's all right. I hope everyone's well. Um, what a week. What a week it's been. And I'm so grateful for Delisa and Phil for um, doing the meditation and the prayer. It was wonderful. Um, I want to talk to you today briefly on raising your confidence in this situation. Um, and I, if you were, if the actual theme I'm going to ask you to type it, those that you remember it, is, I am confident this is not going to break me. It's just a test of our faith. That's a long one, isn't it? So you could type in, it's just a test of our faith, or you could type in, I'm confident this is not going to break me. And you know what? This week has been a week and a half. And there's so many things that have caused us to feel discouraged this week, right? I heard a lot of the um, prayers and a lot of the people talking about what's going on in their minds. And I just want to just realize some of them, what can cause you to lose your confidence? Um, one of the things is obviously the things that happened on Monday when we were told we've got to stay in our house, <laughs> lockdown. Total confusion about whether we were going to stay for a long time or we were staying. Some of us could go and some of us couldn't. And then we were told that as employees, we might not have our jobs. Then we were told whether we were self-employed, we might not get paid. And then we didn't know whether we were going to have our mortgages paid. All of these things can cause us to lose our confidence. And then when we lose our confidence, there's a lack of enthusiasm in us all. And I don't know how many of you went into your bed, covered up with the sheets and said, you know what? I want all of this to be over. I can't handle this. This is just too much. Um, so it, was, it, can be, it can cause us to just lose hope and not have anything. We just don't want to do anything. Um, and I want to encourage today to raise your confidence. But one of the things when you've lost your confidence and then you've lost your enthusiasm you become disheartened. And the disheartenedness can come in economic challenges that we're all gonna be facing or we are all facing. 
first of all, we're all in it together. We're all going through this together. Um, we, we're worrying about the future, the economic future. We're worrying about the food and the situation. Paul and I went up to um, a shop that's well known and the queue was all the way down the bottom, all the way around the corner and the older ones were standing there waiting as well. And it was really hard to see and hard to watch. But we're even worried about making sure that we can provide for our families. So there's this economic challenge. And then we've got this emotional challenge. I don't know about you, but on Sunday, when we were told that we couldn't go and see our mothers, like on Mother's Day, it's like, what? <laughs> it was crazy to us. And, um, and, I, and I think we were in a state of shock. Um, and then I remembered I was allowed to because of me caring for my mum. So I was allowed to. But even when I went, I was scared to whether I was going to, you know, contaminate, contaminate her in some way. But the point is, it's an emotional struggle right now for all of us. And then we've got the physical struggle, haven't we? Some of you guys are probably your beards are growing longer and longer. <laughs> um, I don't know about the girls, but you know, and the beauty stuff that we, we all miss and want. But all of that's gone. So the physical challenges are, are there for us as well. So, and then we, we, uh, we heard Phil talk about the relational challenges, the relationship challenges. So I'm going to talk a bit about that uh, as well. It's the new normal. This is what we have to do. We have to work on Zoom together or um, the other channels together and try and work it out and try and negotiate. So, and I said to you at the beginning that it's all joined up. Everything, all the days seem to be so joined up. It's so, so weird. So... But the point here is that we're in, some of us could well be still in a state of shock about what's happened in this week. And, but we've got some weeks to come. And I want to try and encourage you today um, that if you are feeling like you're at breaking point already, I want to encourage you through the word to raise your confidence that this is, should not break you, but it's just a test of your faith. And the passage I want to share with you today is from Hebrews, Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 36. But before I share, let me just pray. Lord, I thank you for your love to us. And Lord, I thank you for keeping us this week. And Lord, I pray that what we say today will be helpful to others that hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. So Hebrews 10 says, verse 35 says, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance. We've got to get through this, people. So that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what is promised. First thing I want to tell you, this is not a time to throw away your towel. This is not a time to give up. This is just the beginning of it all. Now, in the text in Hebrews, the writer was explaining to the disciples, do you not remember what you had gone through before? Do you not remember when you was in prison and God brought you out? Do you not remember when you, was, you also was in confinement and God delivered you? Do you not remember when you had unsettling times where people were running you out of the cities and God helped you? I want to encourage you today that if God brought them out think about the times when God brought you out of your situation that you've gone through in your life one situation where you had gone through such a trial and you thought how am I going to get out of this but yet yeah, you're here you're here my God thank God that we are still here so I want to encourage you today do not throw in the tower towel do not give up but raise your confidence now I want to give you four things, four tips to help you to raise your confidence. The first thing, the first thing I want to give you is to look at the word confidence. And if we look at it closely, the coal stands for with and the fido stands for trust. So we want to raise our trust in God to help us to get through this. So we want to raise our trust in God to help us to get through this. Amen? So I want you to raise your confidence in the following ways. Number one, I want you to raise your confidence in the promises 
of God. That God promised you that he's going to bring you out and he will. And I have a scripture for you, which is Isaiah 41 10 that says, so do not fear for I am with you. That's a promise. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. That's a promise. I will uphold you with my right hand. If we have faith in God and his promises, we do not need to fear. That's a promise. And I want to encourage you to hold on to his promises. That's the first thing. The second thing I want you to remember is that we need to raise our confidence in the words we say. We need to have positive words. We need to speak positive words. Words that are positive like, I'm going to see the end of this tunnel. We're going to be all right. This is not going to break me. It's just a test of my faith. Amen. I want you to raise your confidence in your meditation. And the meditation that was done earlier this earlier on by Phil and Lisa was wonderful. Use it. Meditate on it. Meditate on it to help you in this situation. Psalms 19, 14 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What are you meditating on? Think about some stuff. Write it down. Type it in. Quote from a passage. Quote from a book. Meditate on a song. Anything you can get you, you to think positive and think differently. Yeah, we're stuck. We're all stuck here together. But this is not going to break me. This is just a test of our faith. Amen. So when we speak in positive things, I want you to remember that we talked about love in the community. I want you to remember that as people of God, we are the voice. We need to be confident in speaking up and saying positive things in our community to help our neighbours, to help our loved ones, to speak positively of the, of the NHS, to talk about the goodness, to speak words of wisdom. Why? Because people are leaning on us. They're looking to you. They might not tell you they're looking to you, but they're looking to you. They want to know what you're saying. They want to know what you're doing. And they want to know what you're speaking. And they will feel it from your love and by, by the way you say it, because we're kingdom people, right? So when you're doing your conference calls, when you're doing your one-to-one -one support with people online, when you're doing your virtual discussions and your house parties, as in the app, <laughs> You could have a house party if you wanted to do it too. But whatever you do, remember that you are the voice. And that voice has to speak positivity because of the faith that we have in God. Amen? And I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. But I want to encourage you that this is not going to break me because it's just another test of our faith. So, we know and I know and we've heard that there are negative thoughts that come into our minds negative um, things that we say, things like, Lord, we're going to die. <laughs> like, how is that helping anybody? Think about it. Your daughter, your son, he's hearing you go, Lord, we're going to die. What's the effect of that child when she, they, they hear that? I want you to figure out a way of saying, yes, it's hard, but change your thought pattern. Avoid the evoking fear. But try and evoke love. Amen? Amen. 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 This is just another test of your faith. The third thing I want you to remember is in our relationships. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's been hard this week, right? <laughs> We're all confined in the same room. I know there's been arguments. You don't even need to tell me. I know there's been arguments. But I want you to remember. I want you to start to forgive again. I want you to say, you know what? I love you. It's okay. We're going to get through this. I want you to give them a hug if you're nearby. That's all right. If your family, it's all right. But I want you to just start to be positive to each other because you're going to need each other. You're going to need this. You're going to need each other. Learn how to negotiate. Negotiate your time. Well, which room? Paul and I were going, well, which room are you in today, love? Which room are you in today? We got, both got Zoom sessions for about, with our clients. We both got to work it out. Evoke love. 
in what you're doing. Evoke it with how you're working at home together. Raise your confidence and help each other in this crisis. And just because you are a man, don't women, don't lean and think that the, the men are not going through stuff themselves because they're strong and all that. Women, if you're together, whoever you're with, we all need each other. Don't assume that one is weaker than the other, one is stronger than the other. You all need to stick together in this. Amen? So your relationships are important and relationships outwardly with your children, how you're handling them, how you're working with them, making sure you break down what's going on in an age-appropriate way to help them through this crisis because they're looking to you. I know it's pressure, right? It's pressure, but they're looking to you. And the scripture says, so don't throw, throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. Now, let's look at this word reward. Now, reward, sometimes we think of, we think of the reward, the afterlife. Yes, it's about that too. But it's also about the here and the now. There is a reward when you start to think and raise your confidence and raise your faith. The re reward is about endurance. You can endure if you start to think and lean on God in everything you, you do. Your reward is in your protection. Your protection. Remember, Ephesians 6, 11 says, take the shield of faith. Yeah? Take the shield of faith. It's a guard for you. It's a covering for you. It's not there by accident. The shield is there to protect you. And that shield is the shield of faith. The shield to, to, of confidence that... I'm going to get through this. I'm going to make it happen for us. We are going to overcome. Amen. And I want to encourage you today that there are benefits in leaning and raising your confidence in this situation. So I want to end with a, uh, a section about stress and handling stress. And it comes from a, a, the mental health side of things in relation to a stress container and I want to give you a little bit of an example now we've all had to deal with stresses this week and we're probably gonna to have to deal with a lot in the coming weeks and I want to encourage you uh, of ways that you can either help your child you can put do this exercise with your child in a child appropriate way or you could do it with yourself mentally but I want you to think of what happens when you have all these stresses that flow down into a glass, all your worries and all your concerns. And I want to just highlight it in this following way. I'm hoping you'll see it. Here we go. Here we go. So we have all the stresses. So my wedding has been cancelled or my wedding has been postponed and the stresses are rising to the top, rising to the top. So my exams, I can't take my exams or they're going to just assess me in a different way. So my stresses are rising to the top. I, over, I start to over clean. I start to bleach everything. And it could potentially turn into OCD. So my stresses rise to the top. And before you know it, the stresses rise so much that there's an overflowing. And there is an overflowing of your stress. And you become break a bull and you become overloaded i want to encourage you not to become overloaded and i want you to think of ways of how you can empty the glass empty the stress container empty it in many ways for example i want you to start to type what can i do to empty that stress container I need to talk. I need to start talking. Don't bottle it all up thinking, I can handle it. I've got this. I'm in control. Start to talk. Start to re release that. Release it in prayer. Release it with, by speaking to your family. Release it by saying, do you know what? I can't handle this. Release it by the praising of God. Release it by somehow reaching out and saying, Lord, I've got to make this work for me. And that stress container must continue to be emptied, but it should never be overflowing. So come on, I want you to start typing. What kind of things can you do to empty that stress 
container. And I believe that is what God is talking about when it says, raise your confidence, raise your self-esteem, raise your, your thought pattern. This is not going to break me. It is just another test of your faith. Now I heard someone talk about whiskey and someone talk about alcohol, but actually those are negative thought patterns that would cause you to go into a, a greater slump. But I hear you though, Andy, I hear you. But you need to start thinking differently because the Spirit of God is there to help you and to push you through. So today I wanna to encourage you to just think of thought patterns, think of ways about holding on to his promises, working well in your relationships, having positive words, and being the best you can be for God at this time. Father, thank you for your love, your kindness, and for your strength in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to just quickly look at some of the things that they're writing and they're saying, all right, exercise, brilliant. I've seen exercise is very important. Go out, go and do some stuff, go and go and work how you, you need to work but make it happen for you. What we, we, you know, wherever you can do it, do it. Go for a walk, maybe, maybe a short walk, but do it. Spring cleaning, yes, spring cleaning is good. I just realised that's Paul again. <laughs> yeah, Paul's been clean everywhere. I'm not had to do anything. Bless him. Well, I have to, had to do something. Being still and learning the art of gratitude. Absolutely, Linda. Being still and learning the art of gratitude. Be, this this uh, meditation that we did before was great that work on that learning to relax and do things and relax feel yes absolutely um you're going so fast and i can't get them all in cleaning and reading absolutely find a book read a book find um something that you've not start a book write a book start to, um, to call a friend and encourage a friend watch something um you like yes ella watch something that you like dean i do box size on my heavy punch bag yes <laughs> That sounds good. That sounds good, Dean. I love that. Cynthia, reading that book, you were always meant to read. Absolutely. If I missed anybody, write, type it in again because it goes up and I don't see it again. Gardening. Yes. On my list for this week. Absolutely, Phil. Go out there and do what you need to do. Pull up the plants. Plant it again. Sam says, listen or play music and focus and relax. Absolutely, Sam. Absolutely, just do what you need to do to get you through this. Priscilla says, clear out the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> clear out the house, yes. You, you top to bottom, clear it out and then do it again. Baking, I love that. I wish I could bake. I can't bake. But yes, baking is good. <laughs> um, washing the car, absolutely, um, uh, Felix. Wash the car and then wash it again and then clean it inside and then clean it outside again. <laughs> Whatever you need to do audio book start painting and creativity that's powerful when you're doing it with your child you could do some too creativity painting is wonderful to do absolutely really helpful and um and somebody says no no not me <laughs> oh well and then we've got dance sessions absolutely have a good old dance in your living room yeah well you know what i'm like anyway that's what i do anyway that's what i believe in so i think it's really wonderful and i just want to encourage you um you oh and someone says you can wash mine isolate all right they're, they're going through their discussion <laughs> no absolutely so i want to encourage you just be be well be safe and um i don't know what this week's going to bring but um i pray that the peace of god will rest on you and that it will be well with you and i hope this um short talk has helped you a little bit in this coming weeks raise your confidence God bless you today. Amen. Keep them in. Keep saying your things. Great. God bless.